Today we're going to talk about the Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro version 1.1. Now I've already done one tutorial on this new board and I wanted to show you another difference that's occurring with the Marlin firmware. So apparently when you use the stepper for the TMC2130 in spy mode, what occurs is that it doesn't have the sensitivity for the actual end stops correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to set this up real quick. So I'm going to remove these. They're actually in the correct position by default on this board. But I wanted to show you this so that you understand it. Essentially, these jumpers set the values that the board will understand for the type of stepper you're working with. So what I mean by that is if we go over to the actual desktop for Big Tree Tech, you'll see for GitHub that there's actually a repository where you can actually search on your particular board like the Octopus. Now it's the Octopus Pro in this case and it's actually version 1.1 so inside here someplace they may have the manual but they show you the diffs between the boards for the actual pinouts and there's also a processor change now inside here there's also a setting for jumpers so as you can see over here right over the stepper there's a jumper setting for using the voltage now there's a higher voltage that you can use on the stepper which would be on the right hand side which would be your actual power over here. But currently we're not using that, we're using main power, so I'm gonna leave it in the default mode. So that's the first thing that I wanted to point out. The next is actually in the manual. Now the manual may not have been updated just as of yet, but as you can see, they're gonna talk about a couple things in here. Obviously I don't have it downloaded and open, so I'm gonna to have to click the more to get to where we need to be for this uh, setup on the actual steppers. So hopefully it's in the next set of pages here. So it looks like we're not there yet, but here we go. So here's the stepper driver modes. And what they're showing you is the bottom ones are step dirt. Now I've yet to get this to actually work. With the step dir, it seems not to be functioning correctly on this board. So if you're using an A4988 or a DRV8825 for a stepper or something like that, that goes into step dir mode being step direction, it probably will not work at this moment on the board. I'm still working on trying to figure out why but as of yet have not figured it out. Now UART mode is not what our stepper currently uses, so we have to find the spy mode, which is right here for the jumper configuration. So if we go back over to the actual board for a second, and we place these jumpers in, you'll see, at least with the contrasted color that I'm using, that these are the actual jumpers that we need to put in. So this is the reason that I actually pulled out the ones that were darker in color so you could see. So as you can see now, we have the steppers in. Now here's the stepper driver. As you can see, it's yellow on one side and on the front with the two pins. That matches over here and then black on the other. So I'm going to place this over here and push it down. I'm also going to connect the actual stepper motor which is over here it's a NEMA 17 in this particular case and because we're using end stops I need to figure out which connection I'm going to use in this case I'm using a two wire end stop so it's ground and signal so in order for the, us to do this we need to go back over here for a second on the computer and I'm going to have to find the actual motherboard now the motherboard night might not be super clear for the pinouts, but let's take a look if we can see a little bit better in here. 
So it's showing down in here where they are. So your end stop is going to be J27, which is voltage ground, and then there's a pin number. So we want the ground and the pin number, which is, I believe, PG6. Let me see if I can make it large. Oh, I can't make it larger, but let's find this another way. So what we can do is we can actually open up the Marlin firmware. Currently I'm using the bug fix version, which if you go to downloads is actually over here. Now this is not a released version, so it's not stable for this board yet. It doesn't exist currently in the 2.1.2.2. So we have to use bug fix because that's where it actually resides. Now you can actually download it by clicking on it right here, extracting it, and then opening it in VS Code. So I need to open up VS Code real quick here. So I'm gonna type VS Code, but you're actually not gonna see it just yet because it's opening on my other screen. So I'll drag it over here. So I'm gonna do open folder. Then I'm gonna go to downloads. Here's my Marlin bug fix. I'm gonna go to the first folder, the second folder, then select the folder. Inside here, you'll actually see that it's starting to load all the information you need. There may be something that it wants to open over here. Um, at the moment, I'm gonna skip that. But I'm going to now click on the Marlin folder, the source folder, and we're gonna check the pins by going to the pins folder but we need to know what the chipset is. And it has changed on this board. So this one's probably gonna be the STM32H7 folder. So if we look in here, we'll look for the Pro version 1.1. And we want probably this one. And we'll see what we get here. So there's only four pins changed here, which we saw earlier on the website. So we have to go to the common, and the reason that I'm saying that is because it's referenced right here to point to it in software. So we'll click over here, and we'll look for the end stop pins now. So you have your diag pins, and it says PG6. So that is the pin that I was referring to over here, which was difficult to see. So let me see if I can zoom in a little. And it says PG6. You may not be able to see it, but it's right there. That's a lot of work to get this set up, but at least you now know what I'm making reference to. So I have the end stop here, and we know that the PG6 key or pin and the ground pin are here. So we're going to connect like so, and we'll leave this over here. Now, currently, with this type of stepper, we have a jumper on. This may cause it to reset. Normally you have to take this off when it's USB mode. And the reason is because your stepper will reset and not work right. So if I connect it like so, you'll see that it connects. If I disconnect it now with no power connected, and I remove this actual jumper, when I plug this in, it won't power. So I'm gonna leave that out for now so that you can see what's going on. The other thing that I'm going to have to do is extract the actual SD card for a second. And I'm going to place it in this drive so that we can actually load our firmware on it. There are other ways to load it. Obviously, I'm not going to show those right now, but I'm plugging it into the computer, which is the beep that you just heard. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to configure this in actual Marlin. So I'll bring it back over here. Open up Marlin, and inside here, in order to configure this, what we need to do is first minimize the pins. We're gonna start with source, core, then boards, dot H. So we're gonna search on Octopus, and there's gonna be several references to this. So you can see that there's 12 references, so we can click down through them. Obviously, they're gonna be paired, so we're looking for the Pro version 1.1, this particular board right here. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna copy this. And as you can see on the right hand side, it says what your chipset will be, which is the STM32H723ZE. So 
with that information that we know now, we're going to use that in just a second. But first, we're going to go to configuration.h. We're going to find our motherboard, which is right here, and paste what we just copied. Then we're going to change our serial port to negative one so we can communicate via USB. Now, obviously, you can do it down here as well for your second one, but you have to uncomment that because normally the first one is used for your screen now, for your TFT display. And that would be like one, I think, for the number that you're gonna have to use here, but that's beside the point. So that's why I'm doing it up here at the moment, just so you can see it. So now that we have that configured, we actually have to go to our I and I real quick here, because I wanna show you that first before I forget. We're going to look for the STM32H7.ini and we're going to search on Octopus. And then we're going to copy what we have right here for our environment. So we'll minimize the INI, then we'll go over to the platform IO.ini and where it says Mega2560, we'll paste it. That way we have the environment set up to actually build. Now we can go back to configuration.h and we can search on the TMC2130, which is our chip, and we can either copy it right here and then paste it right here for our X stepper. And then what we can do is we could also configure down here, hopefully I can find it. It might be easier for me to search on 60, or I'm sorry, 80 comma 80 with the space. And you can see these are the default access steps per unit. So this is the rotation of your motor. These are default steps that they normally work with. Now that'll make sense when you go over to here for your configuration.h in advanced and you search on 800 and hopefully I'll search in the right place, which is over here. And it's a couple down in here. And this is your actual X stepper. So we've actually set this, currently it's set to 16 micro steps and the range is zero to 256. So if you were to increase the resolution of your stepper to double it, you would go to 160 but you would then also have to change this value right here, 16 to 32. If you were to go even higher, such as 320, then you would need to double this value again over here to 64 and so on and so forth up to 256 of a step. Now keep in mind that most people do not go to 256 of a step some people go to 128 of a step, but in this case, I just wanted to show you the contrast between them. So now that we have that set, we're not gonna do sensorless homing right away, but we are gonna turn on debugging. So we're gonna do control F and we'll search on TMC underscore debug. You can turn this off later on, but first we wanna do monitor driver status. So we're gonna hold the shift key, or excuse me, the control key, and the forward slash, which is this one right here on your keyboard to remove the comment. Next thing that we need to do is actually do this search again, because there's a second place where we need to do this. So we'll do control forward slash, and now you can see TMC debug is the other thing. This will give us access to the M122 debug command for the TMC type steppers. This will give us information if there is an error. So now that we have that set, what we need to do is actually build this. So I've already set the platform IO. What I need to do now is actually build this in here. And for some reason, I'm not seeing the actual build button, which may or may not be okay. So normally there would be a build down here. Let's see if I can find if it's moved around or let's see if we can just right click and build, but apparently it's not where it normally is and auto build is showing up. 
So maybe I'll show you auto build real quick. So what we need to do here is click build and it may fail because the board is different or it may sense it. So it did sense something. So we'll do a build now and it looks like there is an issue. So maybe I opened up something incorrectly or they've changed something. So what we'll do now is we'll search around to see if we can find the actual issue. So let's uh, see what's going on here. It looks like platform IO installer finished and it says, please restart VS code. So it may have updated. So I'm going to close it and then I'm going to reopen it over here again. So VS code. And now that it's open, let's see if we have the actual build switch that we normally would have. So let's give it a second here, see what's going on. And let's see, looks like there's something else going on with an update. So it's saying something about the extensions. So the extension is probably platform IO that has changed. So let's see if it actually looks normal in a second here. So let's see what we can do. Let's right click. I don't see the build. That's interesting. So there it is. Maybe I missed it earlier, but it's at the very bottom of the checkbox. So let's click build and see what happens. So what will happen right now is it'll pull down the actual configuration for this setup and start to build it. So the build is a bunch of different compiles occurring. Sometimes there may be a failure where you'll see red like we saw earlier. What you can do is do a rebuild in that particular situation to solve it. Also the auto build probably will build the exact same way which is what I showed you here earlier with this build button but I prefer to use these plugins down here from platform IO because it makes it significantly easier to work with. So now that we're almost there, we're going to have to go back over to the desktop in a moment and we're going to have to install this. But what you can learn from here is if we scroll up and you go to dot PIO and then build this folder will populate for some reason I've got a figure out how to move this outline down. There we go. So inside here, you'll actually see a firmware.elf and a firmware.bin in a moment. That will be our file that we're going to work with being the firmware.bin. So let's see, there it is. So let's right click. Then what we'll do is we'll go over to reveal in file explorer. And inside File Explorer, we have our G drive currently, which is the drive that we're using to build or excuse me, load the build. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to send it to the G drive. Then I'll go to the G drive and you can see it says firmware.bin. Now I have to explain that if you don't have a firmware.cur in all capital letters, sometimes there'll be an issue with the actual firmware load when you first get the board. Now I've already loaded once before, so you can see that it's a larger size for the file, but to create it, if it doesn't exist, you can go to new text document and you would say firmware.cur and I'm going to add an extra R just because at the moment there's an existing file. So if I hit enter, this file will now be current. But if I delete this, then we can do this so that it looks like the first time you would load. I'll remove the dot cur and make it a regular dot cur. So this, if it loads correctly, will have the actual size here and the kilobyte size that you see here, as well as the date down here. That's if you have a successful load. Now on other board types like the uh, Big Tree Tech Octopus version 1.0, it may load, but it probably will not work correctly. This is how I discovered the issue. One of the viewers pointed this out to me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this, go back over to the actual desk, 
and we're going to place the drive inside of here. Now we can load this one of two ways. Obviously we can load it with USB, but there's no power at the moment. So I'll disconnect this and you can use direct power, but in this case I'm going to show you with the actual jumper. You don't have to do it this way, you can use direct power, but I just want to show you it so you're aware of it. So this will load the firmware. You can see the flashing and it's already done. So I'm going to remove this for a second and actually show you what's occurring here and take this off, place this back in the drive so you can see what I was talking about a second ago. So I'll place this in the computer. You may hear a beep. Now we'll go back over to the desktop for a second. I'll open a drive. We'll go to the G drive and you can see that the date and the size has changed. So it appears to, whoop, pardon me. As you can see over here on the G drive, which I just pulled up here, you can see the date and the size have come up correctly. So we know that it's loaded. Now you don't need this in your actual drive anymore since it's loaded. So let's go back over to the board and test it real quick. So on the actual board, I'm gonna have to plug this in because currently it's disconnected. And I'm going to connect this as well, just so we can have connectivity when the power comes up with USB. So here we go. So it's powered up. We're going to have to use this clickable end stop over here to actually toggle the end stop when it gets to the end. You might have to double tap because that's the way it's designed in the software. So let's go over to Pronterface in a moment. And I'll show you that. Now, Pronter Face is going to be somewhat unique. Give me a second to actually fix it here so you can see it. Two seconds. Well, let's see what happens. Now I'm going to have to bring it over in the actual display so you can see it another way. So if we go over here, we're going to try and connect. Now currently it's on COM port 1, so to detect that we're going to have to go over to Device Manager. And on Device Manager, we'll bring this up, and inside here we'll open up the ports for the COM ports and the LPT or the old printer port. So it's COM port 15 in this case. So COM port 1 is usually default for the computer, so I'll select that, then connect. So it now says the printer is online. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is actually see this move around. So give me a second to configure this. Okay, so now that I've got it configured so you can actually see what's occurring, we're going to try and actually home the access right here. So I'm going to have to have my finger on the end stop to double click it. So here we go. So it does move. I had to double click this to stop it and it went the direction that we did not expect. So there's a couple things we can do to fix this. First is we can go over to the desk and let me disconnect the power. The first solution is this one, which is where you disconnect this and rotate this 180 degrees and then plug it in like so. That's one way to get this to go in the left-hand direction. The other way I have to show you in software, and this might take a little bit longer, but we're gonna make a couple of changes. First, I'm going to actually remove the end stop because we're gonna use sensorless homing in this case. And the actual jumpers for the sensorless homing, you have to set down here. So you have X, Y, Z, and then a couple others for these in case you're doing something special. But the X is right here. So I'm gonna place this jumper in here so that we can configure it for sensorless homing. And let's see if we can go and fix these actual differences. So what we need to do is actually go over to VS Code. And in VS Code, what we're gonna go and do is find the advanced configuration and we're gonna search on sensorless homing. So I'm gonna say sensorless. And as you can see, we have one setting here. There's several of them. 
but we need to enable it, which is right here. So I'm going to do control forward slash. Now, the first issue that we're going to run into is that this sensitivity is no longer eight by default. So it's going to grind when it gets there. And I'm going to show you this by design because I want to show you what's going on. So that was the first thing we were going to fix. Then the direction issue. So if we go over here and we search on direction, maybe we might be able to find this. Okay. So let's see, invert stepper direction. So by doing this, if it goes the wrong way, so we'll change this to true. And I believe it's case sensitive. So we have to say true with a lower case. Now we can click here to rebuild it. This may take a few moments to actually rebuild. And we already have the drive in the computer because we didn't need it for currently what we were doing. So first thing that we have is an issue with our build, which is a good thing in this case. So we're going to have to find this issue. So the first place where it occurs, where it's red, you're going to hit the control button and click on it. And for some reason, it's saying something about uh, sensorless homing requires X minimum end stop state be low. And so what we need to do is search on this right here. So I'm going to highlight it, copy it, go back over here, do a control F and V, and then I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that it says right here that it needs to be low and it needs to be in all capital letters. So we're going to do the build again. Some of these changes are new to me, so it takes a second to actually figure out what they're talking about. Obviously, I'm doing it continuous through the video, which is unsettling to me, but not to you. But uh, it looks like I may have fixed it. So let's give this a second. And once this finishes building, we're going to have to go back over to the .pio folder, which is right here, and pull the firmware.bin. So it's going to replace this file in a second for right here. Otherwise, if you click clean, which is right here, it'll take out all this information. So it builds slightly quicker. So we'll right click, we'll go to reveal in file explorer. We'll send it to this drive again. By doing this, we'll have to right click and we'll send to the USB. So as you can see, it's now there. We're going to ignore that thing that I showed you earlier with the firmware.config because that's only for a brand new board. We're going to pop that out and we're going to go back over to the desktop. So let's place this in here. And this time we're not going to power with the USB. We're going to power with the power just to load the firmware. So as you can see, we don't have an end stop anymore. So Hopefully the sensitivity will work, which it won't, but I wanted to show you this so you can see the iterative process that's involved with this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have to go back over to Pronerface and inside Pronerface, what we're going to have to do is configure this. So I'm going to connect and I'm also going to show you the M1.2 or 122, pardon me. So M122, enter. This tells us the state of the driver, or excuse me, the drive, in this case driver, pardon me, and that it's okay. So we know we're good there. There are other things here that you can read, but uh, what you're most interested in is this particular situation. Otherwise, there's a way to decipher what this is inside the actual Marlin firmware, which is a very long tutorial if I show you that. So I'm going to skip that and point you to my Discord where a lot of people know how to do this. Let me turn the camera back on here for a second. And we'll decipher that later. So first thing that we want to do in this case is actually home. So I'm going to click the home button and see if it goes the right direction and stops. It's probably going to grind. So let's see what happens. So you can hear that grinding. I'm going to remove the power. Let that actually uh, cool down. Move this back to the center. 
and then I'm gonna have to pop out the drive for a second and we're gonna have to go back over to Marlin inside VS Code and make this change. Now, depending upon your configuration, this may or may not be the same. So let me bring it up here real quick for you. So inside here, we're gonna go over to the advanced configuration and I'm gonna pick two or excuse me, zero, cause I know zero works. But if I pick like one, that might show you um, that there is still some grinding, but in this case, I'm gonna pick zero just for brevity. So let's rebuild this real quick and hopefully this will solve that issue. Now at this time, I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons. I'll put a thank you note at the very end of the video. And please remember to like and subscribe as it's a great way to get the audience to be able to see these videos more easily. So we're almost done with the build here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll check to see what's going on here. Obviously, I didn't show you this trick about clean because it builds quicker if it's already mostly pre-built. So what we'll do is we'll go back and do the same process of reveal and file explorer. We'll right click, we'll send it to the actual G drive. We'll check on it, it's there. So let's pop it out and go back over and try this out. Okay place this in here. I'm going to plug this back in. Give it a second to power up. Then what I'll do is I'll go back over to Pronerface. Inside Pronerface, I'll reconnect. We'll do the M1.22. You can see that it's still okay, so we're good there. So next we'll try and home it and see what happens. So now it doesn't home. So apparently I've gone too far in the direction of sensitivity on this. And what I mean by that is I'm going to have to show you one last time. So let's go over to the desktop for a second. I'm going to unplug this. And there's one mistake that I made, which is kind of a good one. I'm going to pull the drive, put it in here. And the reason that I'm showing you this now is it's too sensitive, so I gotta fix it. So I placed it back on the computer. I'm gonna have to go back over to VS Code. So inside VS Code, we'll change this to one. It may be two for the value, but one seems like a good guess. So we'll click the checkbox to rebuild it. This is obviously gonna take a moment more, but uh, this will be a good lesson in understanding how to set this board up with actual end stops and without being sensorless homing. That's why I showed you the end stop initially. So as soon as this finishes, what we'll do is we'll go over to firmware.bin and we'll send it back to the drive like we did before. And in theory, this will conclude the tutorial. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go back in here and change this to two if it's too sensitive. So it's already completed down here. So we'll right click, we'll do reveal and file explorer. We'll right click again, we'll send it to the actual USB drive. We'll check to see if it's there, it is. So we'll go back over to the actual desktop. I'll pop this out, place it in here. And then I'll plug it back in and we'll see if this actually works. So what I want to do is actually go back over to the desktop again in Pronerface, connect. We'll double check with the M122, it's okay. We'll try to do a home and see what happens. So we get the nice soft landing on the sensorless homing. At this moment, I'd like to take time to thank you for taking time to watch. And please remember to like and subscribe. And let me show you this real quick that it's actually moving. And everyone take care, be safe, and I'll catch up with you later.